to worship this morning, and a special welcome to all of our visitors and guests who are here with us this morning, as well as to everyone joining us by video and podcast. We would like to give a special thank you to everyone who helped out with our booth at the Pretzel Festival this year and made it a success. All your willingness to share your time and generosity to help staff our booth and provide for our water and other materials is greatly appreciated. On Sunday, October 8th, our youth will be gathering at Tom's Maze at 3 p.m. This activity will be paid for by the Heilman Fund. Please let Shannon know if your kids can attend so we can get a head count. Join us for a fun afternoon. A reminder to our church council members that our endowment committee meeting will take place on Sunday, October 8th, immediately after the worship service. Our budget meeting will then be on Monday, October 9th at 7 p.m. We also wish to give early advance notice to all of you that our annual congregational meeting has been scheduled for Sunday, November 12th, after the worship service, during which we will be voting on the budget, endowment disbursement, and election of church council members for the coming year. All confirmed voting members of the congregation, including all those who have either been confirmed or accepted as new members in the last few years, are invited to attend. The next planning meeting for the fall dinner will be on Wednesday, October 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the church. Anyone who would like to help finalize the details for our fall dinner is welcome to attend. Both the Rotary Pancake Brunch and the Faba Murder Mystery Dinner Theater are happening on Sunday, October 15th. The Pancake Brunch will be from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Community Center at the Park, and the Murder Mystery will be at 4 o'clock p.m. at the Firehouse. Please see me for tickets for the Pancake Brunch, and either Ronnie, Daryl, or myself for tickets for the Murder Mystery. Our next fellowship dinner is scheduled for Wednesday, October 18th, 6.30 p.m. at Buckeye Jake's in West Allen. There is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board of the fellowship hall. Please feel free to sign up so we know how many to reserve for. Mark your calendars for our annual fall dinner, which will be on Saturday, November 4th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. Tickets are $13 for adults, $7 for children 6 through 12, and free for children 5 and under. Start spreading the word and invite your friends and neighbors. Also, we are in need of donations and volunteers. Sign-up sheets are on the back table in the sanctuary. A reminder to our youth that this counts as an event towards your honor award as well. If you wish to make a donation toward the purchase of food, please feel free to give your donation to either Deborah Coyle or Karen McNabb, cash is preferred. The other announcements I leave to your own reading. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us begin with prayer. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God. You declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that pursuing what you have promised, we may share your heavenly glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time we'll have our children's message and we invite the children to come forward. The first reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21, found on page 85 in your pew Bible. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, 
They said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they've committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. I am, the, I am in the place of God. You intended to harm me, but God intended for it to accomplish, for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. <clears throat> I will provide for you and for your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The second reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 5 through 9, found on pages 1,765 and 66 in your pew Bible. One man considers one day more sacred than other. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God, and he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and of the living. Here ends the readings.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, Grace and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was really encouraged by, by what we, by the grace of God, were able to accomplish at, the, at our Pretzel Festival booth yesterday. And I want to offer my personal thank you to everyone who came to staff the booth, helped haul water and materials, helped lead the kids' craft, which was especially popular this year, sewed the quilts, which are going to be raffling off today, and who donated money for buying, for buying water and ice. And guess what? We're not done yet. We're back at it again this afternoon, and we're looking forward to another awesome, great day. If you haven't stopped to see us at Veterans Park yet, come on down. We're over by the Armed Forces flag at what's probably the best smelling corner of the park, next to a candle cellar and across from what seem to be the most popular pretzels. Uh, in fact, the line's probably already gathering about, about a mile long like it was yesterday. So, um, so if any of you want to go grab pretzels from Heavenly Pretzels, you have my permission to leave right now. Now, now even more, I've actually got our application in hand for, uh, for next year already, and as soon as council approves, we're going to get it in ASAP to make sure we get the same spot, since, as I've been calling it, we have prime real estate right where we are. Now, especially since where, we, where we're at is a high traffic area in general, it definitely seemed like not only were there a lot more people at the festival this year, but a lot more people stopped at our booth. In fact, talking about our kids' craft, someone, someone said yesterday that it seemed like there was more action over at the kids' table than there was up front, to which I say, praise God. As a matter of fact, those of you who are working the booth this afternoon, I encourage you, um, please make sure you encourage all families with kids to go to the craft table to make a bracelet, to see the joy the kids have been having while they make their bracelets and having fun together has been rewarding itself. One thing that happened was we were not only able to get the word out about our fall dinner and Demac concert coming up in November, but this year we sold more cookbooks than we did last year. Who would have thought? Which means people still have a hunger for good home-cooked meals. And goodness knows, we've had some excellent cooks in our church's history. I also encourage all of you as well, if you know someone who doesn't have a cookbook yet, we still have plenty available. But not only that, this year, we also started passing out small pocket Bibles, like the Gideon's giveaway, and uh, like in this picture. Those are actually almost gone after yesterday, which is encouraging because it shows people still have a hunger for God's word. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put in an early plea. If any of you have any small pocket Bibles that you would like to give away, we're going to start collecting them now to give away next year, since, again, they went fast like our cookbooks did. 
which again shows that, especially with all the ongoing problems of this day and age, people are hungry to hear some good news. To let people know some real good news, that God loves us and all people. He sent Jesus to die and rise again, both to have our sins be forgiven and to demonstrate his extreme love for us. That's ultimately our job. That's why we're here, to tell people that good news. We're to tell people that no matter what they've done, no matter what kind of life they've led, even no matter what others may think of them, God loves, forgives, and accepts them. He also promises to give a new life and a new direction to everyone who asks him for a change and guidance. But in order to make sure that this good news is heard clearly, and we tell it clearly, there are things we have to be mindful of, and even change, about ourselves. We are the medium through which the message is communicated, and our overall attitude toward life and other people can either make the good news easy or hard to hear. Now much of the reason I've been writing out my sermons for the last couple of years is to make sure that what I have to say is clearly and easily heard without any room for doubt and ambiguity. I've also been wanting to make sure I say clearly what needs to be said for the sake of encouraging us as individual Christians, as well as our church family, to move forward from where we have been. And unfortunately, the place where we have been as a society, and at times as individuals, has been one of negativity and a desire for vengeance. Politics have divided us even further than before, with the response to the COVID pandemic, the economic and social fallout further driving a wedge between already existing divisions and creating even more anger, hatred, and suspicion among groups. Furthermore, the current political and social climate justifies vengeance and anger by calling it either a desire for justice, rights, or restoration of values. We have become both easily inflamed and easily offended. And what has happened is we have become more easily prone to anger. Once again, it is easy to justify anger. It is more easy, it is also more easy to become angry because we are programmed as human beings to fight back when we feel hurt. We also easily hold on to grudges because they make us feel good about ourselves. It gives us a sense of power and control to be able to feel superior towards someone by holding a grudge against them. Unfortunately, even though it is easy to do, like any sort of addiction, it eventually eats away at us and causes us to die slowly inside. This is why Jesus uses the specific image of torture in today's Gospel reading. Because even though anger may give us a temporary good feeling, it is ultimately torture. We may not realize it, but every time we act on anger, hatred, or desire for vengeance, we're torturing ourselves and making ourselves suffer. Constant anger, among other things, causes our heart rate to elevate, both wearing away at our heart vessels and the lining of our hearts, putting us at greater risk for strokes. And that's just one example. But more spiritually, it makes us approach other people with suspicion and prejudice, causing us to judge and dismiss others without seeking to understand, and causing us to want to fight and argue rather than seek relationships. And what this, does for, what this also does for us spiritually is damages our relationship with God. By being angry, we assume God is also angry at the same people we are and hates the same people we do. But to avoid... Dying such, being consumed, and dying such a slow spiritual death, there is a way out. Right here, right now. We can repent of all those things we have done, and all those thoughts we have had, which have kept us trapped in anger and negativity. We can ask God to forgive us, and help us to forgive others. Look at life and other people in a new and positive way, and be in a position to want to help, rather than harm. <clears throat> in order to move forward, we have to let go of all the things we have been angry about. We have to let go of all the grudges and resentments we've been holding against others. 
we also have to recognize and remind ourselves that God is a God of unconditional love. He has accepted us for who we are, forgiven us for all the ways we have hurt ourselves and each other, and has done this for everyone, even those we may not think deserve his love and acceptance. Most of all, we have to let go of any overall attitude of anger, vengeance, or reaction, and embrace the opportunity God is giving us to be content with the life he has given us, be positive about where he is leading us, and seek out connection with the, with the people God has put in our lives and learn from what our experiences may be. To get back to what we were talking about before, with being able to tell people good news, once again, our attitude determines how clearly that good news is heard. And if we Christians are known for being angry and reactionary against things, then that good news can't be heard clearly. A faith that is based on anger and expresses itself in a desire for vengeance or in reacting against whatever is happening is ultimately ineffective in witnessing to true Christianity. As Christians, we do not seek vengeance against each other or against groups of people. We also do not seek to oppose, debate, or correct people, but to seek out relationships and common ground. As Paul encourages us in today's second reading, which Soraya read for us just a few moments ago, we are to recognize that even though we may be diverse in our thoughts and practices as Christians, we are still Christians and all belong to the same family of the same God. We may not realize it, but we Christians still carry a tremendous amount of influence, and people are still watching what we do and listening to what we have to say. We therefore ought to watch our conduct towards others, especially those with whom we may have disagreements, whether in personal interaction or on social media. In all, intera in all interactions, we are to exercise graciousness, compassion, mercy, and sympathy. As Christians, we are in a position to change our culture and the world around us more than before. And we can do so by using the spiritual power we have been given to help forgive and reconcile, which incidentally is what the phrase fixing the circle means, repairing a circle or relationships that have been broken. We can imagine ourselves as being in the same position as power as Joseph in today's first reading. He not only possessed earthly power as a ruler of Egypt, but he also possessed spiritual power as a follower of God. He could have chosen to condemn and destroy his brothers for what they did to him, but instead he chose to forgive them and to recognize that what they did ultimately turned out for the best because he was able to help save them from a hunger from hunger during a famine. In doing so, he used the authority to act on behalf of God in a way that God intended. He did so acting towards them in kindness, reflecting God's kindness. As Paul further encourages us to remember, whether in this life or the next, we are the Lord's. And as the Lord's, we are who he is. We are in a position of greater authority than before. Let us use this authority wisely for God's purposes alone. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
And now together let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the offering. We wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Teach us to be a place for forgiveness and mercy. Give us leaders who explain and practice forgiving. Make our worship an encounter with your forgiveness. Equip us to pray for and share the forgiveness you give through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Make every one of us rich in mercy, abounding in kindness, tireless in good works, and joyful in praising you, the source of all mercy. Open our hearts to be inviting. Help us to practice patience, forgive each other, and choose, to, and choose welcome and acceptance over judgment. Lord, in your mercy, bestow on all of us a spirit of patience, forbearance, humility, and kindness. Encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. Teach us to outdo one another in showing mercy and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Renew the life and health of all who are afflicted in any, in any way by the powers of sin, evil, sickness, or death. Heal all their infirmities, dear Lord, and crown them with your mercy and loving kindness. We especially pray for all those whom we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Most Holy Father, you show goodness and mercy toward those who die trusting in you. Thank you for redeeming their lives from the grave. Make your ways known also to us. Renew our strength and take away our sin. 
Lead us in the pathways of your loving kindness. Teach us to forgive rather than pass judgment upon one another. Grant that whether we live or die, we know that you, that we are yours. Raise us to that perfect and glorious life which you give to all whom you have redeemed. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.